Hello and welcome back to Torvale. Now, as promised in my last couple of videos, I will be doing a build of the N gauge Royal Albert Bridge. Now, this is a brilliant kit which I found on the N gauge forum. Um, I have the link in the description, which I did in the last video as well. But I've wanted this for a long time. Um, as I said as well, it's not going to be exact because it's going to be a double width um, span. So at least I can have a double mainline track running through it. So in front of you, you can see a load of bits of, uh, bits of wood. It's made up of balsa and plywood and it's all laser etched and it's a damn good kit to be honest now i must confess i am not going to profess to being a brilliant kit basher um but i'm going to give this one a go uh, i've had a look through you get some quite decent instructions with it um with photos Instructions on what to do for the either the single or the double width track So yeah, it's it looks like it's going to be excuse me. I've just had a coffee. It looks like it's going to be quite an easy um, Quite an easy build If not a little bit fiddly So let me talk about this one then I've uh, decided to try and do both spans uh, you can buy the kit in one span so that you just have one of the arches of the bridge or you can buy the two i've gone for the two i don't know yet where it's going to go on the layout once the layout is done um so i thought i'd go through a build of one of the spans and uh show you how it's how it's built as yet i still haven't edited this so i don't know whether i'm just going to do a speed up video or whether i'm just going to cut from one bit to the other um Anyway, let's move on. As you, I said earlier, it's part balsa and part ply. Most of the bits, in fact, all of the bits of the decking area, and also this is all ply. And to be honest, it's extremely fiddly down to, I think, a sixteenth, sixteenth of an inch ply that's all been laser cut. It's just brilliant anyway I'm not going to waffle too much I'm just going to get on and go through it with you now here are some photos of the bridge um, I'm I've been down there I was luckily enough to be working in Saltash and it's the first time I've ever walked to Devon and then walked back to Cornwall I thought I'd go along and take a load of these photos from above and below just to get more details um, including the main pillar supports either end, uh, the centre support which is different with the columns, then also you've got the little towers either end and in the middle which I've now realised that the one in the middle actually has chamfered edges which is different to the end too so the build comes with squared off towers for the middle i am probably end up trying to chamfer that off as the actual original is. Uh, there's a lot of detail which can be added. For argument's sake, these ladders on the ends, on the back ends of the pillars. Um, no, towers, not pillars. So yeah, I'm going to probably detail it as much as I can once it's built. Um, I've even been down below. A cracking little pub there with this Union Jack on, which may feature depending on how that sits on the layout. I still haven't figured out whether these pillars that hold it are tall enough for me um, or for the layout. But I've spoken to Peter who designed and built this kit, and if I want any extra height, he can let me have it. Or there are extra formers in the kit which allow a sort of concrete base made out of MDF, I think it is. Um, but that's down the line. We've got to get this wooden jigsaw together first. So let's get to it. 
Now to start the kit, we're going to start with the base. Uh, this is going to be the track bed, which is these, these pieces here. Um, so what I'm going to do is get rid of all of this lot, because this lot will come in later on. Um, so we don't need those now. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm in my dressing gown. I'm, it's silly o'clock in the morning. My missus has gone to work, so I'm faffing about here instead. Right. So, each of the parts, there is two parts to the track bed. One is 16th of an inch, and yeah, 16th of an inch, and the other is, I think, an eighth of an inch, but I may be wrong with that. So, Basically, it's all written out. It's a, it's very well laid out. Uh, you've got different ends here. Tells you which is the inside of it. I I I'm I am impressed looking at this kit. It's brilliant. So, anyway, all right. So as with normal modelers, you can guarantee that. Um, you buy stuff and you've already got some. So the kit says, and I'm going to go with the kit and go with the recommendations of what Peter says. Um, he says uh, he's used, uh, is it a super fatic glue to glue the, all the pieces together. So I went out and I bought, um, bought a small pot thinking that would be ideal. Opened up another box in my railway stuff, which I found in the loft. And obviously found that these things happen. At least I've got some for the future, I suppose. Anyway, it took me a little bit of a while to figure out what the parts are. And I did what men normally don't do. And I actually read all the instructions and got all the bits and pieces together. Here you go. So this 16th piece of ply is one of the bases. There are two because for each span you need two of these together. So the whole kit that I'm doing comes with four. I've already glued some on here. These are the spacers between the bottom plate and the top plate. Now they only go one way. And as always I've done it the wrong way. So that will then go over the top and makes it as rigid as hell. Now, it doesn't say in the instructions about the wiring, but the track will go onto this piece here. So you'll have the two tracks here. What I'm planning to do is as there is a tiny gap when they go together down the bottom, because that will all sit in together, um, there'll be this small gap here. I'm going to try... I don't know how easy it's going to be to run my cables that feed the power to the track down through this deck, down through this decking here, and in through. I'll, I'll do that afterwards. If it comes through and it needs to go down, running underneath, then so be it. I mean, Peter's done some excellent uh, instructions on that link in the description of how he's done it. So um, I may copy that idea but I might try my own just to see if I can completely screw it up. So anyway, these little braces here, once you've done two of them, they, uh, no, wrong one. There's so many differences. If you see this one here has a chamfered end, the one that goes on the end of the board is straight end, but then when they link together, they overlap here, which goes over the middle. I know it'll become apparent later. It's very, very fiddly, but here we go. What I'm gonna probably do is just do a couple of seconds of me sticking shit down, because what's the point in showing you everything? Um, although saying that on some videos, I do quite enjoy watching the sped up bit and listening to the uh, 
listening to what's happening in times 12 or whatever, but I've not actually got down to working out myself how to do that yet on YouTube. I'm pretty sure that the program I use for editing videos will will do it. <clears throat> right, now, obviously I'm just doing this a bit willy and indeed nilly, but this won't be seen because it'll be in underneath. Yeah, I may be wasting some, but hey-ho. I do know to put the cap on so it doesn't dry out. So we've got short and long. The long ones go up through the thicker base. The short ones go on here. It's just a case of locating them in the holes in the base, which are all finely cut out. And that's it, right. You don't need to watch me doing this. I'll get them all done. Well, that's that bed done. As I showed you earlier, here's the other one. So you can see they're all in. So the next one's come along and they bridge the gap between the two. So they go in through. So that will then tie the two spans or the two bases for the f one of the spans together. Once you put them together, there are these small inserts which then go in between them to glue and hold them all together. So let's see how this goes. Blue dot to blue dot again. Here we go. As you can see, there's a bit of a, as with most wood, and it's been a while sat here, there's a bit of, bit of play there, a bit of bowing on the worktop on both of them, which is why it is said that it's best to weigh stuff down. So once that's done there, do that there. That will go as the bracing there. And that will brace both of the pieces together. And then when you put the top pieces on, They'll butt down onto that as well. So it should make it a nice rigid platform. There, because that end's already been glued. Done. That should hold the bugger down. Right, rookie mistake number one. Luckily, I thought about it in time. As you saw here, I went straight over the top of the holes. So what happens when you squeeze it down? Yep, comes through the bottom and nearly sticks your whole bridge to the bloody worktop. Pillock. So I will allow that to set and put some weight on that instead. And do it upright that way. Well, that dried for a little while. Now comes the fiddly bit. I have just done a dry test. And yes, I know I'm going a bit overboard with the glue. So Again, why shows you the, it's the inside. So why goes to the Y end, and this is where, hopefully, once you get the first ones in, and a bit of wiggleation, because wiggleation is a word. See, there are a few that just need a bit of a 
teasing hand, he says. But you can look up inside it. There. Job. Done. Probably won't be the same on the other end. <clears throat> so that, then, is one of the track bases done. I'll put some weight on it in a minute. But I'll do the other end. And then we'll come back. Oh, now it's dried a bit. There you go. We've got the full deck sandwich. So you then get these bridge edges to go on the side. Uh, and they are one way round. And again, they are marked with X and Y so you know which way they go. So once the sides are actually all on and before I clamp it together what I'll do is I'll run one of the cocktail sticks that come with the kit which I'll show you what they're for later and I'll just run it down the edge just to basically smooth out any of the overflow of glue on the inside edges um, mainly on the top part of the deck because obviously you won't see the underside so yeah that's that one done and as they say on a popular barbecue channel that i watch a lot through the miracle of time there are the two spans that is the two track beds for the bridge. I haven't quite figured out how they fit together yet, but I'm kind of thinking possibly on one of the, um, on the center pillar might glue together. Uh, but there is a small, you know, if we have a look at the end of it, there you go, you can sort of see if it will zoom in, that's it. So on the bottom, there's a little bit of an overhang, only tiny, and then there's a top piece that Obviously, once you put the track on the side, it will be possibly about track height. Um, but you may be able to get a piece of ply in underneath to join the two together. Since editing the uh, uh, videos for the track bed, I've realised that there was a massive shadow behind me and the light wasn't the best. So I've put and bought an overhead lamp that now sits above the, the work area. Um, Right, onto the lattice work. This is uh, a little bit more fiddly than the, the base section, but I'm sure we'll get there. All again, etched, or laser cuts, should I say. Um, extremely thin, but very well made again. With a single span, you get one with a long end, and one with a short end. The short end, if you are going for the double span, the short end will meet up with the other span and these two long ones come out towards the end. So for the sections and spanning across the tracks, these little fine detailing here need to be put into each individual slots here and working our way across and then the other piece needs to be done across the top of it afterwards so basically you've just got to make sure that they fit into the slots there you go it even stands up on its own it's not 100 percent upright but that's what we have them for so i shall carry on and i shall start doing these and i'll come back to you when it's done You may have noticed that I've got tape all the way along here. I've put them down. It does say in the instructions, put some tape down because obviously you're going to need to get this bit quite rigid and glued in properly. So if you put some tape on, it saves coming back later on and actually having the, uh, the whole structure glued to the worktop, which you know would be a bit of a failure. Quite enjoying doing this actually. <clears throat> it's 
Excuse me, I'm just getting over a bit of man flu. Excuse the coughage. So that is all in and done. What I will do then is, that one there is not quite upright, just put that in there to hold it. I then get in a cocktail stick because although this will dry off and it's on the inside of the bridge effectively, I still want it to look nice and neat. So I'll just, I suppose I could have used a brush, but I've got these cocktail sticks that came with the kit for the top tube former which I'll go in in the next video so I'm just using these just to run the bead all the way down through which helps to sort of fill in any gaps on the edges and it also if you twist it kind of removes the excess as well as I said I'm only learning doing kits because I haven't really made, in fact, I don't think I've made any many kits since since I was a kid, which is going back a, ooh, at least a long time. There you go. And there's loads of glue on the tape underneath, but at least it's not going to be sticking to the worktop. Well, once they're all on and it's all dried, now we've got to put the other bit on the other side. I think the easiest way for me to do this is to lay this piece down on here, glue it up, and then try and line these up. There may be a bit of swearing, because I think it's going to be a bit of a pig. But, you know, we'll give it a go. Yeah. Okay. Take it back. Easy than I thought it was going to be. Oh, there you go. That's those two done. Just got to let them dry now. And then we've got the side bracing to join it together as one. So I will come back later once these have dried completely. Well, the glue's now dried on these. So I'm butting them up together and so that they don't pull apart, I'm just putting a little bit of masking tape over just to hold the bits together. I'm using tape, which is a bit like Tamiya tape. It was a cheaper version, but it's doing the same job. Right. Let's get to it. There we go. Lay it on. The thing with the glue is you can just bit of wiggling into place. I've already put that one on the top which was holding it, but I've left a bit on the outside so I can just flip it over and that will hold that there once it's in place, which is good. And this is where my fingers will get filthy for two reasons. With the laser cutting and then obviously the glue, they do get a bit dirty because you've got the Obviously it's been cut through, so it's burnt the wood. So you will get black fingers, but hey ho. Worst things in life, isn't there? Now, again, using my trusty toothpick, I just run this down all the excess. 
and once you've got an area that you think that you're going to need to hold in place another little bit of tape obviously experienced model makers may be looking at me going what are you doing like that for but every day is a school day you live and learn so if you think I'm doing it and uh, there's something that could help me in the future then please feel free to comment as I say, every day's a school day. Everybody's willing to learn. Everybody's got their own ways of doing things. And there may be some people who haven't got a clue what they're doing. Yeah, like me. Um, I just thought, at least with these, I've got them here. I might as well use them. And it's, it seems to be working all right. Well, there you go. That's all of the uh, all of the bracing done on the sides. I'm just going to let it to glue. And as they say on that barbecue channel, if you've ever watched the uh, barbecue pit boys, and in the miracle of time, there you go. So that's both done. So I'm going to let those two dry off, and um, the next video will be the tube that goes across the top of this and also the two pillars either end and then the center column as well fingers crossed that shall all uh, be done within the <clears throat> excuse me within the month <coughs> ourselves